Greetings! It is I, Tantus Nerve and Jacobin, your Lord and Emperor here at the Jacobin Empire, and welcome, one and all. How is everybody doing? I didn't get rid of that. I thought I closed that down. There we go. <laughs> That's a leftover from something else. Uh, I just noticed it was over there. But hello, everybody. Welcome. We're talking about Shadowrun as a guy today. I've been going through this tour of the Sixth World, which I've been quite enjoying because... It's a way to introduce you to a lot of locations and a lot more thought patterns on places you could play, certainly in a Shadowrun world. Shadowrun, because of its nature of where it's published and, you know, the centricity of a lot of events that have happened within North America, it means there is a heavy North American uh, presence. Granted, it doesn't mean that that's the only country we know about and stuff. There's plenty of countries throughout the world we can give history and information for. But now we've visited North America. We've visited Africa. That's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to visit Europe. Because Europe is an example of one that I know that there is some very good information on. But not to every country. Just as similar to an Africa and a North America we see. A lot of these countries we know about from maps and information that's provided throughout the books and the various uh, editions, we know what countries are there, we know their kind of general state, we don't always know a lot of information about it. And once again, I'm going to tell you here, I'm going to be using the Shadowrun Wikipedia mostly for this information, but today at very least I can shout out a book which provides you with an incredible amount of information based on this. And that is this book here, which I have in PDF form from 3rd um, edition, Shadows of Europe. If you're looking for anything based on Europe, there are bits and pieces throughout a number of other books, but this is the source that is going to be the best for you. And I'm not going to say that there are plenty of other places you can go to learn stuff. There are some other books out there which provide plenty of great information uh, about Europe and what's going on there, but... <clears throat> a lot of this comes from Shadows of Europe. They also mention stuff in many of the core books, some of the other Shadows of B books, which they did for 3rd edition, uh, things like the Sixth World Almanac. Um, I'm not showing their pictures there because, again, this is the book that really shows a lot. This has the most information of any of them, by far. So, definitely, definitely, if you're going to do anything European-based, use this one first and foremost. And then, again, uh, I would recommend the Shadowrun Wikipedia, just to give you an idea of what other books you might want to take, depending on where you are, uh, for what countries you're visiting, and uh, various things like that. So, but, I am first going to have us go to page 15 of here. Uh, and I'm going to leave this in the background, and I'm going to throw some, like, flag images over top of this, because I have the map of Europe circa uh, 2063. So this is a little off from the, this is, again, this is 3rd edition, so it's a little off from the um, way things are in 5th edition, but, again, not a whole lot of major changes has happened. A lot of the countries and the way that this looks here is accurate to how Europe ends up. And there are a lot of uh, countries that are similar. We have the United Kingdom. We have uh, Scandinavian Union, which is the combination of a number of countries. Uh, Poland still exists, though it is technically split apart. That's a thing that there is. Ukraine, Belarus, Russia, you know, Hungary, Czech Republic. The Italians now the Italian Confederacy. France is still around. Switzerland is still around. Uh, Spain is there now. Portugal. Greece, but it's called something else. Turkey, but it's also split in half. We'll talk about that. Kiranog, which is formerly based in Orna as uh, Ireland. <clears throat> I'm going to talk about a lot of these locations. And again, like you can see that there's the, the Balkan states is just uh, a mess. They've kind of been a mess historically, and what's happened in Shadowrun didn't help its case at all. So the first two things I want to talk about are two major events or two major things related to Europe as we're getting started in our tour here because the first thing is we want to talk about the major historical events that happened and then a current bit of existence and stuff here which there are things like the Scandinavian Union but that isn't the only thing that's there so first thing I want to talk about is a major historical conflict in Shadowrun's timeline. The Euro Wars. The European Wars. 
There were two major wars that spread throughout Europe, and because of the nature of the way things were going in the world, they didn't spark something like a world war. You have to think this is these took place post things like the uh, the major plagues that happened, the the first matrix, the first crash that occurred. So things have broken apart. The globalization has been damaged a lot. A lot of countries have lost a lot of individuals, a lot of power and stuff like that. So during this time period, two wars occurred in 2030 and 2037. Um, 2031 was Russia evaded Poland and Finland. Uh, the Polish military took didn't take long. Um, they crossed the German-Polish border in 2031. And then the Europe, uh, Western Europe formed the European Defense Force replacing NATO, who had kind of fallen apart by then, and basically attacked the Russians. Um, Russia was advancing through Eastern Europe, Czech Republic, Hungary, Austria. Um, they were, European forces were having trouble. Uh, in 2032, Russia was advancing towards Berlin, um, but it was too difficult to take, so they bypassed it and basically went into the heartlands of Germany. Uh, and then the European Defense Force uh, took a newly founded Met uh, 2000, uh, which is a uh, mobile in French force. Basically a new version of like mobile infantry with cyberware and stuff like that. The Morning Worm. And uh, managed to stall the evasion of the Elbe River in 2032. Um, in 2033, a new faction, um, unidentified but suspected to be the United Kingdom, uh, basically attacked both war sides with night wrath bombers, destroying their a H HQs, using computer viruses to sabotage their networks, and command commando units to assassinate basically hardliners. Armistice was signed after that. 2034 led into the second Euro War, because in amongst then, Europe has been torn by this giant war that happened, then a fundamentalist Islamic movement took over in the Muslim states during the Middle East during this time. Again, the world is destabilized. And the Alliance for Allah was formed, uh, f focusing mainly out of um, Turkey and various other countries. And they launched attacks on Russia, India, the Balkans, Israel, uh, the Iberian Peninsula. Um, the only attack that was unsuccessful was the one in Israel. Um, and... It had air defenses and then used tactical nuclear weapons to, de you know, damage the enemies. Um, there was rapid advancements towards Russia during this time. Uh, invasions in a lot of areas were being very successful. Uh, the invasion of Iberia was going relatively well. Um, they'd gone into Spain, Sicily, Portugal, and Italy. Um... But in 2036, uh, Anglo-Spanish restored their uh, King Hassad, their king at the time, to the throne, ending the fundamentalist role and kind of breaking the Iberian Peninsula's jihadist movement. Because basically, with the Spanish government kind of broken, they settled back upon, hey, we have, you know... They basically pulled a little bit of a um, Britain and brought back their monarchy as a figurehead for the entire thing, you know, of like, you know, Spain first... Um, with the, with the, um, with that, Spain was basically liberated. Then two months later, Greece was retaken. It was a stalemate in the Balkans. Um, at this time, though, the eh, Alliance for Allah was basically going to turn around things in the Balkans and kind of push back again when the leader of it was taken out by a commando team. Infighting began and basically all their military operations um, faltered, um, and then European commandos toppled, toppled a lot of the fundamental regimes, and the war ended in 2037. So these were the two Euro Wars um, that occurred, and they are pretty big major events that kind of destabilized and broke apart a lot of stuff that was going in in Europe. So when we talk about Europe 2063, 2080s, kind of getting up towards the 2080s, which is, you know, uh, Shadowrun 6 edition, we have to take into advance that there was you know, honestly, within the last 50 years in Shadowrun, another set of two major wars in a decade, which had huge implications, destabilized a lot, lots of loss of life, lots of destruction, destruction of infrastructure, 
cr lots of things that happen. And when we talk about Asia, the Middle East, and all that kind of stuff, in another video, we're going to talk about some of these things. But there are countries like Turkey that I'm going to talk about completely, even though it's kind of two countries now, and one's more Europe, one's more Asia. We'll talk about it today, because it does have it. Similar with Russia, we're going to talk about Russia today, because it's involved with a lot of stuff. They were the aggressor in the 2030s war. Kind of makes you think about today in Russia being an aggressor. But that's, that's a political thing. We're not going to talk about that. But please, no aggressions, people in the world. Anyway, now, there isn't something like the European Union. That kind of stuff collapsed, honestly. But there is the new European economic community. It is an economic union between most of basically Western Europe. Um, I can actually get a map here. I forgot to get this map together so we can... Um, Throw it over the thing here quickly. Boop, 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 There we go. Let's turn on this one for the map. There we go. So that's the, that's just a picture of the, uh, which they talk about in the shadows of Europe. If you want to learn a bit about this, the new European economic community. As you can see, it's basically like got a number of countries in there. It's got a number of candidate members. Um, there's the big stateless area. And there's a huge, like, basically most of Eastern Europe is not in it, at least right now. But it doesn't mean that they can't. It's just things like, honestly, Ukraine's had some... We'll talk about a lot of these countries and things that have been going on. But a lot of major countries are part of this. And basically, it's a... If you want to learn more about it, I recommend heading into the Shadows of Europe. Uh, as I've talked about, that book is the best place to look into a lot of the stuff related to here. So, we want to start talking about countries. And uh, we'll just take that down for now, because honestly, we have a number of countries to talk about. And we're going to go into them very nicely and uh, talk about all of them. So, I'm going to go alphabetical. Uh, because, again, the great way that the Wikipedia does is alphabetical for going into these countries. And, again, I'm going to tell you, many of these we don't have information on. I don't really have book sources and stuff like that. I can probably mention places that you might look on for it exists. And certainly we can look at the map here and know places exist in here. Like, I'm going to start with Albania. I know Albania exists on here. It mentions number 13 in the uh, Balkan states. It's a member of them. It exists as of 2063. But what the heck is in Albania? I can't answer you on that one. Um, but we're going to do our best to go through all this stuff here. So yes, Albania. It's part of the entire area. Um, basically... What happened is, right after the first Europe, European war, uh, the European economic community, southern France, Italy, southeastern Europe, began to shatter into basically hundreds of city-states in their surrounding regions. So, a lot of that area has managed to build themselves back up. France and Italy are more united. Now, Italy, like Italy and Germany, if you see their changes in their names... It, it marks that they've had the Allied German States, the Italian Confederation. Why are they called this? Well, they fractured into their city-states, existed in these city-states for a while, and then managed to rebuild a version of a country that's probably a lot closer to, a lot less the unified country they used to be, and maybe closer to something more akin to something like the U.S.'s, where the states have their own walls and ways of doing things, and each state acts very differently, but they are united under a centralized government. It's just probably a weaker centralized government, like old U.S. was, where the it was more states first. We know that Seder Krupp is there, and we know that... Um, there's mention of this area in the feral cities and, of course, the shadows of Europe. Um, it probably puts it on the map. But if you want to check out something on it, you know, page 124 of feral cities is a good place to look into. Albania. Now, I can throw a flag up here because we have one. Bum -bum! Oh, we'll do the smaller one so we can kind of see the map behind it a little bit, too. The Allied German States. Well, 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 well. That's someone we can talk about, of course. Um... 
So basically, the thing is, Germany split. It was shattered, and what's happened is a number of smaller kingdoms, duchies, and republics kind of formed over what was the Federal Republic of Germany. But they are still technically united in a way. We can talk about that. They are still considered like um, one nation to a degree. Um, they're a confederate republic. They have a president that's kind of elected from their various uh, groups. But again, they are kind of split apart. Um, it's known for having several great dragons, a large number of night ones, and giants in their area. Uh, the component states and major areas are the Balden uh, and Palace, uh, Palatine, Black Forest Troll Kingdom, Brandenburg, Franconia, Free State of Bavaria, Free State of Saxony, Free State of uh, Thurginia, I'm going to probably butcher some of these, Free State of Westphalia, Grand Duchy of West Rhine, uh, Luxembourg, Greater Frankfurt, Hesse, Nassau, Northern German League, Northern Rhine Ruhr, and Württemberg. Um, there's also some territories that are part of it, but unassociated with these nations. Berlin, the Duchy of uh, Palm, uh, Pormaya, uh, the Creech Special League Zone, and what we're going to talk about in the future, the Sox. But we can talk about the Sox. Um, Russian crime groups dominate the area, though there is some mafias and stuff too. Um, yeah. There is an old Germany source book that existed, I think, in second edition. I mean, it's certainly outdated now, but that's a good place to check out for things like that. Shadows of Europe actually does have um, uh, an entire chapter on it, which I can kind of... Uh, I'm, I'm going to go with this. Go with this. I'll, I'll, I'll go up to it and you might see. Like, um, yeah, the Allied German States is an entire thing that they have um, 15 pages on, which talks about the entire thing. And highlights a, a number of those uh, smaller groups in there, too. But basically, it's a allied ship of... Uh, with the fracturing that occurred, the, the grand fracturing of Europe, uh, in the mess that was the European World Wars and the plagues and the downfall of infrastructure, German managed, Germany managed to rebuild something of what it is. So it's not the same country as it used to be. It's, again more fracturous, but they do have a relatively unified kind of government over top of it. I would compare the current allied German states similar to what the European Union would be for us today. The European Union, where they've kind of got this kind of economic, slightly political group together that kind of unites Europe, and then it, it, it tends to have a little bit of that politics, more economic than anything, but they're each still individual countries. This is probably a step closer to us, but still closer to that to a little bit too. So uh, the Deutschmark is there. The Euro still exists as well. The Euro, one Euro is equal to one Nuyen and two Deutschmarks are equal to one Nuyen. Um, so again, the Euro is a leftover from the European Union as it was. Um, yeah. So, you know, the European Union's been dissolved, but there's still essences of maybe a little bit of what it's staked, and there's still plenty of countries that actually still use it. Uh, I think to, to note. Uh, we can speak about <clears throat> another country that is... Uh, can I see it on here? Um, it's not on the small countries map. I'm trying to find out where it is on the map, because I'm great at f finding things. Um, and, well, you know. Um, Andorra is there. Um, it's a country. So I, I can tell you nothing about Andorra and Shadowrun's world. It's mentioned in Shadows Over Europe. Um, and Seder Krupp is the corporate presence there. Uh, let's move on, though. Unfortunately, it's another one of those countries that we know exists. It's just, I can't tell you a lot about it. Austria's still there. Austria's still there and independent. It does still have relationships with you, uh, Germany, of course. Uh, it's got a very extremist Volksfront Pol Club, anti Eurocrats. Um, uh, 
so the thing is, Austria is very corporate controlled. And I don't know, unfortunately, how it's evolved since its dissolution of its government. Because in May 26th of 2000, its economy was failing um, because of a lot of bank decision. The president dissolved parliament, handing over power to the Stallmanner, a council led by the foremost corporate figures of Austria. It means there's a huge corporate presence uh, of a lot of different country, com countries there. There's a lot of like corporate strength in there. Um, there are some, also to note, when we're talking about things like Germany and Austria, there are some German published source books for Shadowrun that uh, Waltzner, Punks und Schwarzeis, uh, they've got information on Austria, but it haven't been translated to English. Um, so if you can speak German or find a translation somewhere or make a translation, there are some source books that talk more about Austria. It's just the unfortunate thing that as an English speaker with only the English books, and, you know, uh, I, can't, I, I know a little German. I'm not great at it. I can't really tell you a lot about Austria. Though, um, the good thing about uh, this book here is... Uh, that's not 58. Uh, there's a section on Austria. That's here. But there are more books that are on Austria and German and stuff in German speaking. So if you want to use the Shadows of Europe... I got it there, too. So can, they dive more into Austria there. Um, again, I feel like with these countries... Like, I might do individual videos on the countries of Shadows of Europe uh, that are basically mentioned in here, uh, in the book, just because these are the countries we know about. And there's a lot of countries to talk about here. I don't want to dive into all of them. That might be a great way to kind of go over them. Anyway. Uh, let's do uh, the bees. Because there are three bee places. Uh, Belarus still exists. Um, in uh, 2031, an attempt to succeed from Russia when they were kind of taken over during the Euro Wars. Um, the thing is, in Europe as it is, there are two major political powers in Eastern Europe. And it's Russia, and it's Ukraine. The Ukraine of the Shadowrun world has actually took advantage of a lot of the issues that were going on and still has conflict with Russia, but in a different way, you know. And um, so Belarus, as a mostly independent because of post war point war, it it's basically panders to both Moscow and Kiev to try to keep things going in its place. Um, its industrial and agricultural output is kind of terrible because of mismanagement. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, it's mentioned in a lot of places. Uh, Shadows of Europe gives you some information on it. Uh, Shadows of Asia, because of the connection to Russia, talks about it a little bit. And it's mentioned here in, like, 3rd, 4th edition. And Six World Shot Al Almanac and stuff like that. Um, so, yes. We have uh, what is the area of um, the, well the area where Bosnia uh, Herzegovina I'm butchering that one was is now mostly kind of its own thing this is in the mess that's in the southeastern Europe that is the Balkan states and you can see there there are a lot of really crazy things going in there and so the two things in there are the Jarvo Enclave and Allied Islamic Territories I can't tell you a lot about the Allied Islamic Territories the Jarvo Enclave I can tell you um, there were some Balkan peace talks in 2063 that um, some suicide bombers blew up at the town hall to basically stop the peace talks in the Balkans and keep the battleground going there in this disputed territory. It's kind of awful there, unfortunately. It, it's just, there's a lot of things going on down in that southern part of the uh, Europe that haven't resolved. Like, 
there have been plenty of conflicts even in more modern time in, in our version of the world there and there's still a lot of internal conflicts throughout that region and now let's think about adding three like four or five different powder kegs of magic plague massive destruction of the infrastructures of the world uh meta types showing up add all that into the mix and it's just a mess down in that area it is a mess it is broken apart it is chaotic it is just people probably doing the best they can in that area there too um yeah it's just unfortunate Uh, Bulgaria is also a country that used to be in that area that's kind of fallen apart. It's, it's Stuff exists in that area, but also doesn't exist in that area, and that's the kind of tough way to talk about it. Um, so, th you know, that's the best I can say about it, is it's sort of there, but not there. Yeah. Um, hmm. Ah. <sighs> Um, there are some other things, places to talk about a little bit here, we can mention. Um, we can start with uh, an area that's within Turkey, and technically on the border between Asia and Europe, the free city of Constantinople. Because Istanbul, Byzantine, Constantinople, it's an independent city. As Turkey kind of split in two... Constantinople basically declared its independence. Um, there's a lot of mercenary organizations in there, the, uh, the 10,000 Daggers, the Grey Wolves. as a democratically elected council that runs the government. Um, you know, the thing about Turkey in Shadowrun versus Turkey in real life, Turkey applied to join the European Union and joined it in our timeline. In theirs, in 2009, Turkey did not join the EU, which didn't help it. Then we have the Awakening, the Crash of 29, allowing extremists to basically gain a lot of control. Um, the uh, Mulan Seyar uh, Jazir, who was the one who in charge of the Alliance of Allah, being in there, assassinated Istanbul. And basically, in 2042... When the Turkish Civil War was arriving and the two sides of it were basically fighting out, uh, Istanbul declared its, you know, independence. It was recognized by Ukraine, uh, who went to support the city, um, and it renamed itself back to Constantinople at the time. Um, so, yeah. Ukraine tried to annex the place. It failed. Um... 2045, there was a huge uh, earthquake there. The government hired the 10,000 Daggers after this time to basically get things control of it. Um, they discovered there was termite spirits, basically a type of insect spirits in the city in 2056. And they managed to wipe out the hive before it was too late. Um, and then... Um, We know that the Turkish Civil War came to an end before 2077, but we're not sure exactly when. So, I mean, the Turkey was kind of civil warring with itself for, like, 30 years. So, um... The two sides basically wanted Constantinople to have it rejoin Turkey. And it remained independence with the help of the new European economic community and uh, Ukrainian warships. Um, and that's when the 10,000 Daggers and the Contract and Grey Wolves came into it. So if you want to run an instant, interesting place, instant, Istanbul, the free city of it, is very interesting. I'm mentioning it there. Um, Corsica, we can talk about, or free Corsica. Uh, again, I don't have a lot of pictures of uh, flags and stuff but when I do have one I'll show it off uh, I think the next one we have is uh, the Czech Republic that's the unfortunate thing I would love to have more flags in these places too uh, with this capital of Ajiko um, had earthquakes in 2043 and uh, Marme Bonaparte invested money made through real estate and smuggling to help rebuild the local economy 
and be elected president for life. Um, it was originally part of France, but gained its independence in 2050. So, um, got a president for life, though, who's named after Bonaparte. Uh-huh. Uh, and Bonaparte has strong ties to the Corsican Mafia. We've mentioned that. He's underworld. Uh, connections there. I'm just... I, they don't say. I would just be curious if he's related to, you know, certain other Bonaparte that exists. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm just checking uh, where some countries are in the world. So... Uh, Croatia is a region in the Balkans. Again, Balkans is chaos. It's mentioned in the Balkan states area. It's sort of a territory or not. Um, there are uh, the Devil's Garden is an area in there which home to a bunch of unique Paris species. So basically, magical species with awakened wolves that have a territory uh, and drive out intruders. But again, it's with a lot of Europe being in a mess. It is also a mess. Let's talk about uh, bah, 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 the Czech Republic. Yeah, I can certainly talk about the Czech Republic pretty good there. Uh, I could look up real flags for existing places. That's true. But a lot of these flags have sometimes changed too in high lays. So that's kind of a really hard one to do to necessarily. That's why I kind of don't want to do it necessarily because I can represent the actual country as it is in our world. But again... Things like the Italian flag has changed um, and, and stuff like that. It's, there's subtle changes, but I have the Italian flag. And some of these countries honestly don't really exist. Like, the Balkans is just a mess. And it still is. It, think about Madagascar. Madagascar isn't a country anymore. It's a territory run by pirates that was once a country until plague decimated, decimated most of it. And then basically the various apocalyptic things that were going on forced the remaining people to basic either flee or stay in a place that became lawless with no government. Balkans kind of like that a little bit. Um, so it's Czech Republic. Chechnya also could be referred to. It's got parliamentary democracy. Um, Prague is the capital of it. It uses the euro entirely there. Uh, in 2012, it rise, rose up against the Vatican because the time the Pope at the time denounced metahumans. Um, basically, it's had a lot of hermetic studies there. Um, in 2021, it offered full assistance for all goblinized citizens. It was invaded, of course, in 2031 by Russia. Uh, Austria came to its aid. Um, they broke the Russian in 2033. They broke the Russian lines uh, uh, south of Prague. Um, they had the Night of Rage uh, in 2039, uh, which the Night of Rage not only was targeting, you know, anti-metahuman riots, it also, unfortunately, because of the uh, Second European uh, War, Muslims were also targeted during the European Rage within Czech Republic. So, you know, it's the Night of Rage did target a lot of metahumans, but basically it was an excuse for anybody that was angry with anybody to target them and try to kill them. It wasn't good. Um, the unified magic theory was presented in the University of Prague. Um, the Prague Conference had the second UN Charter, and the first Nobel Prize in Magic in 2049 was awarded to a group of mages from Germany and Chechnya. So as much as um, Czech, Czech Republic has actually done a pretty good job of maintaining itself as a country, is it a very powerful person? It's a member of the UN Security Council, uh, a, UNIF, uh, a UNAF contributor, uh, part of the um, the NEC, the New European Economic Community, and uh, has mechanized forces and stuff like that, and some corporate presence. So basically, Czech Republic has done a good job of maintaining itself, you know, with parts of Europe and stuff. So they've done a good job. Um, yeah. I mentioned them? No. Uh, there's also Carnia and Cyprus, which I know very little about e either of these. Uh, Cyprus is on the closer to the Middle, e Middle East. It's technically an island. 
Um, it has its own things there. And Carnia, I don't know if it's actual place. Oh, Carnia. Um, ah, it's a part of that region of, uh, like, it's, it's in Europe, and it's kind of become its own thing. It was a staging ground during the uh, Euro Wars. Um, infrastructure was never repaired. So it's kind of an area on the edge of the Balkans that is a little bit lawless in its own thing. Um, so Carnia is a location you can definitely go to and do some crazy crap there if you really wanted to. It's not really its own thing anymore. All right, we got, we got some stuff. We got some stuff to talk about. And certainly some good ones to chat about. Uh, I will mention the Scandinavian Union members a little bit before we hit the Scandinavian Union. Because again, uh, if you want to really dive into the Scandinavian Union and its member countries, Shadows of Europe. And I probably will maybe do a video entirely on the Scandinavian Union itself. Denmark has uh, two large independent corporations, are uh, the, basically some mega corporations that are independent from all, from a lot of other ones, uh, are Marsk Intercorporated Assets and um, multi, multinational tier, uh, and Ares Europe, which is from Ares Macrotopia, has the headquarters in Copenhagen. Um, Of all the countries that were damaged by the Black Tide in the Scandinavian Union, they were the worst, which was a uh, basically natural disaster that occurred on 2011. Uh, Force 13 storm basically poisoned the waters of the North Sea, uh, caused a lot of damage to a lot of countries there. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, here's what we can talk about a country that I have a... Um, which page is larger? Uh, that one's a little larger. The Duchy of Pomoria? It's basically a bunch of elven aristocrats uh, in an enclave in the Baltic Sea that... Uh, it's it's sea land, except they actually have population. Um, so they've got German and Slavic traditions. It was once part of the Allied German states. Um, well, it, it's technically kind of part of the Allied German states, but it's kind of on its own. But it has a, a, a thing of its own. It's in the Baltic Sea. So I wanted to kind of talk about it on its own. Uh, just a little bit. It's got its own language of Pomeranian. There isn't a lot there. But it's funny. And it exists. Uh, Alright. Of course, we will move on. Because we got plenty more to talk about. And, uh, you know, a lot more of Europe. And we've only reached E. But honestly, it's going to go pretty quick when we go through some of these alphabetic. Uh, <laughs> gotta be honest. It really will. I just have to make sure, like, uh... Yeah, the Baltic states are Slovenia, uh... Uh... Slovenia? Not Slovakia. Croatia, allied Islamic territories, Republic of Sparska. Uh, let me zoom in on this to see if it... Wait, yeah, there we go. Uh, the Nair Collective, Dalmantia, Skorčova Enclave, Montenegro, Vol... Uh, Voj... Vindia... Enclave of Barsov, Kosnova, Novi Para Enclave, Kosovo, Albania, Free Macedonia, and there's also some contested territories that go in here. Uh, I'll kind of zoom in here for for for, for southern here yeah, because you can see it up here. That, it's a little better to zoom in on the map here. Yeah, this is a mess down here in the bottom. It really is, and you can see where Constantinople is actually, um, which is kind of on the edge of uh, Turkey there, and that's why it was able to be kind of independent of itself regardless of the parts of Turkey that were there. It's just a mess of a country area. Yeah. Ah. We have, of course, uh, on the map here, Estonia up in the not top here. It still exists as a country. Um, it had a lot of issues from the European world. But um, after Russia withdrew from the Baltics, Estonia was one that was actually able to rebuild physically and economically a lot better than a lot of its neighbors. Um, it has strong ties with Finland and Sweden. And though it isn't currently part of the uh, Scandinavian Union, there have been discussions of possibly joining it and stuff like that. We'll talk about that. 
Um, so there's a lot of connections in that region there, and it is actually a pretty rebuilt country. Uh, that's all I can give you right now. Uh, you know. Um, use called Heria, which I think is one of these. Uh, is that one of these things here? No, it is not. Where is use called Heria? Oh, there it is. Uh, in the northern part of Spain. Um, southern European country. Uh, it's a corporate-run republic uh, with Gastes as its capital. Um, basically, in the crash of 29, some Baroque separatists with some corporate backing took advantage of the chaos and basically seceded from France and Spain, forming an independent nation. It's got a president, a congress, and a senate with seven members, a uh, corporate uh, consergio economo acting as an advisory manner. The congress and senate introduce, debate, and pass legislation with the president being uh, left to attack most decisions. Um, the consergio economico is only supposed to be able to propose draft legislations, but corporate presence and a lot of power there. Um, so basically some people in independence and they kind of got corporate controlled. So it's a region that's a country that's owned by corporations. Yeah. But it was in that area of France and Spain right there. Um, let's talk about the Federal Republic of Hellas. Or Greece. Yes. It's Greece. Um, so the thing about that is it also fractured a lot during the 2030s. Um, and a, about a quarter of the population was killed during the Alliance for Allah, the Second European War, and the occupation that happened until 2036. Um, there was a major insect spirit in, uh, infestation in Athens that was exterminated in 2055. And astral conflicts manifested at sacred sites during uh, Halley's Comet for a lot of the ancient wonders in both Europe and in Athens. Um, Levos is a major gambling hotspot there. Uh, the island of Lemnos has a stadium hoping combat biking and football games. Um, so, the Hellenic Federal Council rules the country. Because Greece is not a united country anymore. It's, it's broken apart back to the old city-states, basically. Very similar to what it was. But you have to think about Greece in the early days, word amongst themselves, but Greece by the time of, you know... Macedonia and all that kind of stuff was a little bit more united and it's kind of like that and they've got a, a, a council responsible for limited pan-national issues um, it is not a member but a pending member of the NEC um, it's got Cyclops and Minotaurs which are troll variants in you know this air region there um, a lot of artifacts and stuff a lot of magic from the, a lot of the ancient technologies and stuff and well ancient places that were there uh, you know um, it has also invested a large amount of funds to rebuild the country's rail infrastructure. So it's actually got one of the fastest and easy modes of transportation between its city-states. Um, so as much... It, it, it suffered very heavily, especially during the two European wars. And it's done a pretty good job of rebuilding itself. It's a federal public. Athens is still the capital. But again, it's a lot of city-states kind of mentality there. Uh, Finland, member of the, uh, of course, um, Scandinavian Union. You know, we'll leave that for the future. Uh, let's hit up a little bit of France. France is one that I definitely will be talking about in the future in its own episode. Um, France. Uh, yes, France itself. Um, yeah. Yeah. So France has a uh, pretty distant time. Its currency is the euro or the new yen are both accepted. Um, so. It's a big territory. It's got some overseas islands and territories. Um, it stands from the Mediterranean Sea to the North Sea, from the Rhine River to the Atlantic Ocean. It's bordered by the United Kingdom's Netherlands, Germany, Switzerland, Italy, Monaco, uh, Yorsk, Heria, Andorra, and Spain. It, it includes Belgium now. It's a meta... Uh, you know, uh, that's things to talk about. That's if we go dive into it. It's metahuman friendly. Uh, there's no bias towards metahumans. Um, 
Those who are cybered are best considered to be amputees, to be pitied and seen worse as deviants. Um, so cyber is very, like, low. But data jacks and fashion wear and favor, and are, are, are things that are big, and they favor bioware there. So it's like, cyberware is like some connotations in French society, but like, yeah, you've got a data jack, that's fine. Some fashion wear, that's fine. Uh, the law is strict about weapons and non-therapeutic magic, or cyberware are viewed as possible weapons. Um, don't do conspicuous displays of magic. It's a suggested one. Um, so, we are currently on the Seventh Republic as of 2079. Basically, the Fifth Republic was the is the version of France that we would talk about that we know. This is the Fifth Republic time period. The Fifth Republic fell in twenty in 2029, aka the Matrix crash or the the original the crash of 29. There was a defense government that lasted to 2036, where the Sixth Republic formed, which in 2079 now the Seventh Republic has replaced it. Um, so in 20, 2008, uh, the Cantonam nuclear uh, plant melted down, irradiated Lorraine, Surrey, and Luxembourg, creating the Sox. We'll talk about the Sox. Uh, the mist appeared in Brittany in 2030, uh, in 2023, which is a very strange, unearthly fog. Um, basically kind of magic fog appeared in there. Yeah. Um... Wallonia became a region in, of France in 2028. Uh, in 2029, there was a military coup that established a defense government. Then there was the European Wars. Um, and then Antony or Loyens is elected president and prepares the Constitution of the Sixth Republic. Um, there's protesting a, a reduction of the police military presence. Southern cities practically succeed, established a security force. Um, There's a group that enjoins the score of Um In 2043, a big earthquake devastated the southern part of it. Marcel, Nice, Monaco. Of course, again, it's a in 2050. Um, uh, in 2057, Orly de Paladins is elected president. Um, in the wake of the crash... Uh, 2.0, an underworld war between the uh, Vori and the Mafia happens in France in 2064. Uh, the Borsaline Forest in 2066 becomes a self-governing uh, territory under the control of Corrigan, uh, a group of not a sapient non-metahuman creatures including pixies and spirits. Um, they're basically their own country technically-ish kind of Corrigan- kind of its own thing yeah it's it's we, we, we can hit up a little bit more about that but it's basically pixies spirits non human non meta humans basically took over this area in 2066 um they came the the beings came forward to help the druids of the region fight against the mist um so it exists as a kind of independent thing in france uh, yeah. Some other things happened. In, in 2079, Section 89 triggers a new revolution that overthrows the Sixth Republic. Seventh Republic is formed under President uh, Johan de uh, Kervalek. It's a cyber democracy where Congress is drafted together over the matrix uh, from the population for a single vote. Um, so it's a cyber democracy and has been formed. There's a lot more to the entire history, a lot of stuff that goes on, and I really could dive deep into France, and I think that's a region why France should be its own video at some point in time. I've talked about the individual country videos to kind of talk about some of these places that we know more about, and this is one of those ones I can definitely point out and be like, Let's talk about France at some point in time. Anyway, let's keep going and talking about places because there's still a bunch of places to talk about. Um, 
and plenty of them are really neat and interesting, and uh, we will uh, kind of discuss them as we look deeper into Europe. Again, a lot of these places we really can't say a lot about because there isn't a lot about talk about for them. I mean, like, we're going to be hitting up Italy in a second here, and that's one of the things we talk about. Ah. Anyway. So. Uh, let's talk about Hungary. Why not? Hungary. It exists. <laughs> it's on the it's on the map here. It's got technically, it's got borders. Eh. Its presence in the Danube Union and the Euro Wars. It's petitioning for member in the NEC. It's got relations with Germany. It's got some corporate presidences that we can talk about. That's about all we can talk about with Hungary. Unfortunately, there isn't a lot on it. What we can talk about with their slightly different flag is, of course, the Italian Confederation. Um, so, yes, the Italian Confederation. It, it has a lot of the essence of what we've talked about for a number of places here, like the um, allied German states and um, the Federal Republic of Hellas. Um, that's kind of the same way for the Italian uh, Confederation. It's it's splintered a lot into these city states or small almost countries that, you know, come together. So, what we talk about for this is the Italian government's six, successive Italian government's collapse from corruption scandals from the twenty twenty seven to twenty thirty. Italian forces fight in both fronts of the European War in 2031 uh, and 2036. So they're involved in both Euro Wars. Um, then there's the Great Shattering in 2033. Uh, Five Days Milan in 2063 ends, uh, signals the end of Republic. Corporate mercenary troops seize key locations and ensure the peace. In 2037, Papal States are formed. Um... In 2038, a lot of places form local governments and other basically city-states are formed. It's 2044 when the Italian Confederation is finally formed, officially. Basically, it was uh, merely a decade of basically chaos where a lot of smaller places are forming their own governments. And it's sort of like there is still this Italianness to it, you know, just like France, Germany, Ger uh, Greece... Even if you're your individual city, your city, own city state, you are still part of like a nationality and stuff. So they rebuild a version of their countries. Uh, 2057, Venice's canals are purified. Um, and uh, the big event is then we have a dragon that established an, uh, a stronghold in 2073, Alamos, uh, near uh, Gemito. Uh, which is a one of the sprawls, the Genova, Milan, uh, Torino sprawl, basically, city-state. And effectively, basically, says dragon superiority, gets a whole bunch of adult dragons near him, and they just feed. Eating about 300 metahumans a day. Uh, about 90,000 metahumans are killed and eaten by the time uh, that the great dragon Lorfwin intervenes and starts the great dragon civil war. In which uh, Lorfwin attacks uh, Alamas's compound in uh, Gitmo uh, with overwhelming forces that are a thousand metahuman mercenaries, Shadowrunners, armored vehicles, air support, 20 adult dragons, and two other great dragons, Long and Erelish. Um, the metahuman Shadowruns score the killing blow on Alamas on uh, no November 6th of 2074, and 38 dragons uh, besides Alamas die in the battle. So, that was a big thing that happened in Italy. But Italy might be another one we might dive into in the future. Let me actually check the list of uh, places. I'll get the full list of places that we'll talk about from the book here, because honestly, as much as I like to talk about some of these little places, really need the uh, Shadows of Europe book is the one that I can talk about stuff from. But that's Italy, and the stuff that happened there. Um... Uh, Kosovo is kind of there still. Again, since the European Wars and the Balkan regime, it's been unstable. Um, 
it it was reclaimed by Serbia in 2064, technically, so it's kind of part of Serbia, kind of, in the region here, but also, you know, it's a, it's a mess in there, so I can tell you the map is slightly off there for that one. Slightly. Uh... Anyway, uh, there is also Kronstadt, which I think is on the list here. No, the Kosovo is on the list. That's what this Kronstadt. Um, sometimes trying to figure out where these places are is hard. Kronstadt, hi, thank you. Oh, it's it's. Uh, it's an independent city from Russia. Gotcha. Okay. Now I know where it kind of is. Uh, Kronstadt? Yeah, Kronstadt. See, there it is up here uh, towards the top. Um, Kronstadt is independent. It's hard to tell. It's over near St. Petersburg. Um, it's an independent city-state. Um, that was part of Russia and on the, um, near Finland and stuff there. So, I, I can tell you it's an independent city-state. You know, uh, Konigsberg, uh, yeah, uh, with its existence where? Ah, uh, Konigsberg, near Lithuania and Poland. Again, it's an independent location. It's a corporate state, I can tell you at very least. It was formed in 2032. E can't tell you a lot about after that right now. Uh, Latvia is up there. Um, Riga's the largest city in the Baltics. Um, it has heavy industry and manufacturing, which keeps it alive. Um, it has archaeological interest groups with a number of uh, places like the Apes Cor a Apep Cor Consortium and the Atlantean Foundation uh, that have digs in the area. Can't tell you a lot much about Latvia at this point in time. Uh, unfortunately, it just, there isn't a lot of information on it. I think, uh, I'm not sure if Liechtenstein still exists or not. I can't see it on the map here. Because I've got information on basically when it existed, and it could have existed. It might be gone. I can't answer that question. But I can talk about Lithuania! Another Balkan state up there, in the north there. Um... Uh, it's uh, a flagged economy and widespread corruption set the stage for the spontaneous public acclamation of a Lithuanian Grand Duke. So they've got a Grand Duke there. That's what I can tell you about Lithuania. Another country that we'd like to know more about that we don't. What's going on there? Eww, stuff. Stuff. Uh, I do enjoy the fact that, like, so many of these countries, it's like, I can kind of tell you what's going on there, but I also can't tell you what's going on there, because, I don't know. We don't know. We don't have all the information. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Yes. All right. Let's talk about Macedonia. It's in the Balkans area. You know, it's broken apart. It's got problems. We don't know a lot about it. Um, it's in there, though. It's technically its own thing. Kinda. Um, Malta is technically, if you would look on the map down here, uh, is its own thing. It's its own country. It's got a, it's got a national capital on there. Um, of uh, Valletta. Sorry, trying to read on my thing here. But I can't tell you a lot about what's going on in Malta other than it's still independent. Or it is independent. I don't know if it is right now. I think it is. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so, um, Meze Mezzoginoro happens to be in Italy, but is independent um, 
Pneumonicos on there, too. That's neat. It says it's independent. Basically, they declared their independent in 2038 following the collapse of the Italian uh, government. Um, oh, it did consider itself part of the Confederation, technically, the Italian Confederation. Okay, never mind. So it's a place in the Italian Confederation. Sorry. Yeah, this one is. Oh! Moldova is gone, technically. And why is it gone? It was annexed and invaded by Ukraine during the Euro Wars. All the stuff that was happening with Russia and all that other stuff. Uh, it's an excuse to take over stuff and never give it back. Um, there is New Monaco there on the map. Um, and it is an independent city-state. So is Nice. There's a lot of city-states that have, like, places that have declared themselves independent and have the surrounding territories of them. It's a thing that happened. I can't tell you a lot about New Monaco at all, but it's there on the map. Uh, Norway is part of the, you know, um, Scandinavian Union. We'll talk about that. The Papal States are a thing. That's a Christian theocracy. Um, is it on the maps here, or is it part, that they consider part of the Italian Confederation? I don't know. It might be part of the Italian Confederation right now. But there's a thing called the Papal States. Um, I believe it's probably part of it, too. Similar to kind of how um, the Vatican's in there, too. Poland! Oh, Poland. Let's talk about Poland, because we can certainly discuss a little bit about Poland's Polandness. I believe Poland is in our shadows book here. Uh, look at page two. Maybe that's where it is. Uh, yeah, Poland divided. Czech Republic, France, Italy, Portugal, Scandinavia, Spain, and Skrskahera, Austria, the German Alliance states. Is that the ones I can talk about? Oh, United Netherlands, Tiernanog, United Kingdom, and Switzerland. Yeah, some good countries to talk about. Plenty of nice ones. But yeah, Poland is two countries, kind of, yet not two countries. Oh. Uh. So, in 2010s to 2020s, Russia and Poland had their own small Cold War between the two ones, um, with all that was going on in the region there. So there was a lot of issues, and it, that was the, the European wars basically, you know, saw a lot of attacks on Poland. Um, so the conflict with Russia was a big thing that was part of it, and um, caused a lot of destruction, dissent, breaking apart of it, and that kind of battle with Russia, yeah. Um, basically, in 2039, President, uh, Polish President Warszaw Rybinski, uh, in response to the Night of Rage, asked Russia to step in and stop violence with a uh, Russian military help. He declares martial law. Names as the president of the new Republic of Poland. Um, there's some Seder Krupp, Krupp influence in this event. Uh, so, there's then a Polish government in exile because basically now Russia has basically kind of taken over Poland uh, in France. Um... Yeah. Then, um, so now we have the two, two governments of Poland, though the one that's Russia support is kind of in controls. Um, so Russian occupation continues into 2053, um, but the current president who's under the control of Russia, his power begins to weaken because there's strikes and riots, the economy's in strangles. Um, Yep. Uh, so, I'm trying to figure out... Uh, a lot of stuff happened in Poland. I'm trying to give a, a basic information on when a, if the two Polish governments um, still kind of exist. I mean, as of 2062, there's still a war between Russia and Poland and the Polish resistance. Um, they control the territories of the Free Republic of Poland. Um, but, you know, so there's the Free Republic of Poland and the National Republic of Poland, 
and they're kind of warring with each other. The National Republic of Poland is basically Russian-controlled state. Um, the Free Republic of Poland in currently control of uh, Cilicia and provisional uh, capital of uh, Rohrclaw. Um, so yeah. That's the thing about this one. Poland, I can tell you with the information in the uh, Shadows of Europe book, some good stuff about it, but I'm curious as to how it is in the 2080s. We don't know a lot about the result of that war in Poland. Unfortunately. Uh, I have Portugal's flag. I can tell you pretty much jack diddly about Portugal. Uh, th th I don't have a lot of summary of it. Uh, fortunately, it is in the Shadows of Europe book, I believe. Did we see that it was in here? Uh, let me just check. If it was. Yeah, Portugal's in here. So if you want to look up Portugal, again, the sh we'll, we'll talk about it in its own thing because I can do the Shadows of Europe, but it's like, I, think I don't have an extra lot of information. I think this is the one thing about a lot of these places and stuff like that is um, the Wikipedia site isn't great um, for putting a lot of this information. And the thing is, a lot of this information is small mentions more than anything. Romania still exists, but Romania has some issues. Um, Ukraine annexed the northern third of the country, including most of the Transylvania region, and then declared basically Romania its protectorate. So Romania is not really independent, but sort of independent kind of thing. A country I'm going to have to talk about on its own which it might be in the Shadows of Asia book, I'm going to probably guess, is the Russian Republic. Um, basically, it's the largest successful state of the former Soviet Union. That's the best way to call it. Um, there's a lot of very, very prejudices and horrible idealisms that run rampant in the Russia as it is because there's some very like very deep racism in Russian culture and unfortunately with the awakened metahuman metahumans and a lot of stuff like that it just amplified a lot of those feelings of unfortunate bigotry in some of the ethnic cities in, in Russia um, I can't really state whether it's getting better or not um, the version of there's a lot to unpack when it comes to the Russian Republic in, in Shadowrun. It, it really has to be its own video. I, I will have to do something on it and just dive into it. And I think when we finish up kind of Shadows of Asia is probably the book that's going to talk about it a lot more. But it's a thing to unpack. Russia really is. I, I'm not going to lie. There is, there is a lot there and... It's not always easy to uh, kind of discuss. It, it, it's it's a it's a hard topic that we're going to dive into, though, definitely. But we're doing pretty good on getting through uh, these here. We're we're we're. That's exactly what I mean. Let's talk about the socks. As you can see on this map. And I kind of go down there. Sox is in between uh, France and Germany. And it's big. What is Sox? The Serre Lorraine Luxembourg Special Administrative Zone. It's a sealed emergency zone recognized by the Allied German states and France. Basically, there was a nuclear meltdown in the Cantonem reactors in 2008. And it's been walled off by a series of five, high, five meter high, three foot thick reinforced concrete bar barriers, automated defenses, monitored by watch powers positioned at seven kil kilometer intervals along the wall. Um, in 2053, control of it was handed over to private uh, structure called the Controlat Council de Administration. Uh, joint corporate presence including AG, Chemi Europe, Ares Macro Technology, Eastern Star Pharmaceuticals, IFMU, uh, Proteus AG, Renraku, Seda Krupp, and other corporations. So effectively, it was handed over to corporate control, but it's these group of corporations that, you know, <laughs> that's the thing is, the best way to control a lot of megacorps is to have them compete with each other or agree on something. It's one of those things. The Mercer Company, Met 2000, has a contract to provide perimeter security.
Yeah. Um, in the fall of 2070, the Rad Wars were the f uh, hold for the first time in the town of Metz. Um, that's a thing I can probably talk about. What the hell is Rad Wars? I will look that up. Do you give me information online, or is it just something mentioned something? Oh, it's Desert Wars, but in there. Gotcha. We talked about Desert Wars the other week. Uh, yeah. It, ugh. Desert Wars on the radioactive place, which is maybe better. Um, so the corporations are conducting a decapitation process. Um, for a lot of radiological research and military te technology testing is used for the area. And the radiation levels provide physical and magical security to sensitive research compounds. So, I mean, like, it's a reason that corporate control was really pressured it and wanted to have control of it because they could use it for a lot of things there for their stuff. But it's a big old radioactive zone. Uh, we talked about Star of Jezo. The Scandinavian Union we'll talk about a little bit as a group. Because we've talked about Norway, Denmark, Finland, and now we'll talk about Sweden also with this one. Basically, after the crash of... Um, it, it's modeled after the European Union. It was found after the aftermath of the crash in 2031. Um, Finland only joined it out of fear of Russian invasion at the beginning of the Euro Wars. So basically, it was originally going to be Norway, Denmark, and uh, Sweden. But Finland kind of joined with it when they're like, hmm, just in case of Russia. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. The economic hardships of the Black Flood, the crash of 29, basically drove them to kind of form this kind of union. To, and it's more of an economic kind of strength more than anything because it, it does, they have built more of it after that, more common security policies. But remember, it's modeled like the European Union. The European Union was more economic with some, you know, political, militaristic kind of things together. And that's where it was. It was to mostly rebuild the economies of all these places. Um, so in 2063, Estonia and Iceland want to join, but it's very controversial in uh, their parliament and council of the union. So they haven't really decided on that. Then we get the crash of uh, the crash 2.0. Um, yeah, well, a lot of things happened there, um, and it's got a lot of corporate influence there, too, we can talk about. But we, we'll probably dive into the Scandinavian Union on its own video at some point, too, you know, as we talk about that one. Ah, we have, uh, Serbia. Where is Serbia? Is that down in there? Bulgaria, Romania... The Ukrainian protectorate, uh, Ukraine, Belarus, where is Serbia? It's in the mess of stuff. Oh, it is next to the mess of stuff. There's Serbia. Over next to uh, Bulgaria and Romania. It's fucking Romania. Again, another one that's in the Balkans area. Has a lot of issues. Um, has bitter enmity towards Croatia and uh, the neighboring Islamic splinter states. Uh, that's what I can tell you about Serbia. Uh, come on, close that there. Uh, uh, the Solvac Republic, uh, is, um, or I think that's probably Slovakia, I'm guessing, is in there. Barslava, is that the capital? Yeah, Barslava, I guessed it correctly. Can't really tell you about that, it's a parliamentary democracy, it's, you know, when uh, the Czech Republic and Slovakia broke apart to the two nations. I remember it was Czechoslovakia. Um, you know, it's the other one of the two of them. I can't tell you a lot about what's going on there. Uh, of course, we have Slovenia, um, which, again, I think is in the mess in there, right? Yes, yeah, Slovenia is in the mess of the Balkans. Good for it. Again, it's sort of like, we can tell you what we can tell you from the, from the mess. I can chat a little about Spain. And that's the last flag I got there. Um, there we go. Um, ah. So, went through a share of a lot of stuff. It's a parliamentary monarchy. So very 
England. Um, the actual, the current king is Juan Carlos II, who's an ogre, um, a subgroup of, I believe that's ogres or troll, orc metaveri, which is kind of, there's a lot of racism in Spain, and it's unfortunate that that doesn't help too. Um, the fact that this person became king drove the um, country to near civil war in 2064, basically after uh, Juan Carlos II's father died, and both him, his brother, and him were accessible for the crown, his brother human, um, but his brother disappeared, and with the, him the claim to the throne, Juan Carlos II basically got to the throne and has been doing his best to do that. On the political side of the parliamentary, there's two chambers of Congress, the Congreso, which rules over the Congress uh, country and governs the law. Uh, the president of the country is elected from that chamber. The second chamber is the Sen uh, Senado, um, which represents uh, all the different autonomous communities, uh, each of which has four senators. It's got a corporate and underworld intrigue, a lot of that in that section of the government there. Um, they have a space pad on the Canary Islands, a lot of corporate presence. Um, and the Spanish Association Faquez and Arabic Al uh, Akirhad Aswad Mahir are the two underworld groups and are at war with each other. But the Galatian Mafia, you know, and some piracy is also a thing there too. Suburbs of Madrid are plagued by gangs. Madrid's still the capital. I mentioned Sweden as part of the uh, Scandinavian Union. I don't have to go into that much. Switzerland. So Switzerland very similar to many other countries, has a lot of issues. We can talk about it a little bit. I can get rid of this uh, flag here. So, there's a lot of hostility towards metahumans and regulations on magic in Switzerland. Um, laws were passed in the 2020s. It's the thing is, it, it just requires some basically like very, you know, fundamental racist people to get in charge and prove those things. And the German and French speaking parts of Switzerland have been at odds with these. The German support side speaking kind of support the hostility towards metahumans the french seeking uh cantons were more tolerant and there's been a lot of strife between the factions over the years and the discriminatory laws western cantons were basically able to opt out of discrimination laws um and 2040s we did see the first sets of improvements where elves and dwarfs in the german cantons were able to become citizens we haven't seen some improvements in orcs and trolls as of that time period so Certainly, they're, Switzerland's holding together with its two, like, halves, barely. Um, the United Nations was moved to uh, Geneva, though, in 2005. I think the current version of the UN um, does still technically exist. Though it was reloaded back to New York. I mean, Geneva's not a great place to go to, kind of, for reasons. They're neutral-ish. <sighs> I mean, Switzerland is improving. But, again, a lot of the terrible sentiments from a lot of things that happen and a lot of hatred that exists basically because it can still exist in Switzerland. I think that's another one that's in the uh, Shadows of Europe that we'll have to dive deeper into. All right, we're almost done for today. And we will talk about a couple more very important places. Um... Uh, that I can mention. I think, again, some of these hit up on the Shadows of Asia book I'm going to be guessing when we talk about them um, in the future. Let's talk about... Um, an area that is within the uh, Cossacan countries. The area of those are media, Azerbaijan, and Georgia is the... Uh, Transcaucasian Federation now. Um, basically, after the European Wars um, caused by the Cossacan countries, this group kind of united together as a group. I think we can you see that? Uh, we can't see that in the map. It's kind of off to the side there, I believe. But it's on the border of Europe. So it's kind of your Europe border. So we talk about it here. Um. All right. Uh, that's in the Italian Cup. Turkey. Let's talk about Turkey. So, Turkey 
is, I, I cannot safely say for my information whether or not Turkey has reunited into one country. I think the two sides are no longer at war with each other, which is good. There's no longer a massive civil war between the two halves of Western Turkey and Eastern Turkey. Western was more secular. Eastern was more Islamic controlled. Basically, it broke apart after the Alliance for Allah ended. Um, and the, you know, all the results of that kind of broke things apart a lot about that. Um, yeah. Basically, European wars, the second one ended. Uh, European countries invaded Turkey, toppled the government. Um, provisional government was put in. And, um, yeah. <sighs> so... Secular Republic of Turkey, capital out of Ankara, is the um, kind of, again, western region of it. It's the border with Europe. It's where kind of Turkey is on the mixture of Europe and Asia. Um, it's the government that formed after the Europeans' powers basically managed to win the war that Turkey and parts of the Middle East started. Um, the remainder of that other government and the people that wanted it went to the Eastern Turkey. Turkey. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, this is a hard one to go into and maybe it's, it should be its own episode for both sides of it. But there's the Eastern Anatolia, which is East Turkey. Um, which is, has Anda at the charge of it, and it's the Islamist extremists, remnants of Alliance for Allah basically took control of that region there. Um, so both of them should be kind of talked about, or one as a whole, and I feel like that's kind of something I should dive into, it's on its own one. Similar to uh, Tirnanag. Tirnanag, I feel like, should be its own video, which I think Tirnanag is in here too. Do you got me turn knock? You do. You do and I have it. So really I probably want to dive into it it's on its own. But it's where Ireland was, basically. It's one of the tier nations. It's a, the a theocratic republic. It's I mean like it's kind of democracy democracy, but it has powerful family clans, the Don families, and a lot of influence. It's an elven nation. A third of the population's elven. Um, elven immigrants come there a lot. A high number of elven children are born there. Um, it's former island in Northern Ireland. It has five provinces there. Um, Ulster in the north, Meth in the east, uh, Lannister in the southeast, Munster in the southwest, Cornot in the west. The formation of it was in 2034. Basically, it was in the 2014s. Magic came about, and guess what? Um, magic was being used to try to break away, regain control of Northern Ireland, that kind of stuff there, and things happen. Um, Liam O'Connor becomes state president of Tiernanog in 2035. Uh, he disappears from public life in 2042. Um, in 2049, they established Church of Ireland, banning the Roman Catholic Church from the country. Um, so there's 22 families of the Danan families, and which eight are particularly powerful, and they basically controlled the government pretty hell. Um, there's more to talk about for uh, Tim Nanak. But I think that's, again, for its own video or something. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty powerful nation there. We can talk about a little bit about Ukraine, which is an odd one because Ukraine is kind of its own thing and kind of had certainly been under the control of Russia during the Euro Wars. Russia conquered it. You know, conquered a lot of, it basically went to war with Europe. In 2031, it did succeed from Russia. Um, or how come it's been discovered there from Yehili's Comets visit. It invaded Moldova, took it over, annexed part of Romania. So, I would honestly be curious. I don't think they talk about it at all. Unfortunately, it's one of those places that I'd be very curious as to what's going on in Ukraine. Just similar, and I don't know if they're going to talk about it in the shadows of 
um, Asia, unfortunately. They do. Uh, they do uh, it mentions it on in the index here. So maybe, maybe I can find more information on in the Ukraine in the future. For now, I don't know, but I would love to talk about it more. I'd love to know more of what's going on in that section of the nation because of it's the tumultuous history in that area that I would like to know more. Of course, we have the UK. Uh, so effectively, um, since the 2014 Act of Dissolution Treaty of Galway, which reunified Ireland, the United Kingdom and Great Britain are effectively synonymous. So, capitals London is still a constitutional monarchy. The leader is Her Majesty Queen Caroline. He's the currently queen. Uh, the pound sterling is still in existence. Um, in 2009, they had King Charles III crowned in Westminster Abbey. Um, so it's a little bit different there. A lot of things happen. Um, so King Charles II abdicates in favor of his only surviving son, George the Seventh, in 2012. So if you follow, you know, royal stuff for, um, stuff. Um, there we go. Anyway, uh, in 2021, uh, in 2016, the Prime Minister, Elena Rondal, is assassinated. In 2021, King George the Seventh is declared dead. Uh, rumor that he was killed when changing into a troll. There's a succession to abuse, and, and George Edward Richard Windsor Hanover becomes King George VIII. Um, then in 2025, the Lord Protector's offices are formed. Uh, the United Kingdom Constitutional Act, which is a thing. This is something that would, again, there's an own video to talk about, but it's a big thing. And it, the Lord Protector's offers, you know... Detroit's a lot of stuff. We know in the Great Britain deployed troops in the Netherlands and Flanders in World War the first. Um, we know a lot of things that have happened kind of there. Uh, oh, in 2046, researchers find a freshwater serpent in Scotland's Loch Ness. Um, so from 2025 to 2071, the Lord Protector was the most powerful man in England, which is a powerful druid. Uh, most of the time, the uh, title was held by Arthur Charles Gordon Windsor, born in 1994. It, it managed educated, licensed, and registered magic users, technomantrists, cyberware, and the national security. Um, rivaled the power of the Queen Caroline, who was young and quite popular, but the, and the growing political power of the People's Party. In 2062, um, there was a man in the Iron Lengroos who rose from the channel... A uh, man called himself Pengram, uh, Pendragon was cited and claimed to have retrieved Excalibur from the island and organized a political opposition. Um, until, and he's kind of seen here and there until June of 2071. There was a massive peaceful protest of the People's Party uh, acquired uh, the consent of Queen Caroline to dissolve the Lord Protector's office and the position of Lord Protector. Uh, the Lord Protector at the time went into exile. The new government had to shut down the office entirely. All to be found that some of the functions were necessary and had to settle for a restructuring, carrying out the decisions of the HKB, which is the uh, Hildebrandt Kineford Bernal, um, a, a British corporation. And um, Prendragon basically took no other role in the government, was never cited after. So he didn't want, he's like, I got Excalibur. He didn't want to be king, though, whoever this Pendragon is, this mysterious figure who existed. Um, it was a political activist who said to be the resurrected King Arthur. Um, yeah. So, Queen Caroline's still in charge, I guess, sort of, as a queen? I don't know. Um, ah. And, uh, it is a it's a mess. It's something to talk about, United Kingdom. Also, there's the United Netherlands that we can talk about. The UNL. Uh, the Europort is their capital. It's a constitutional market, uh, monarchy with the leader of Queen Amelia. Um, and yes, it consists of Netherlands and Flanders. Uh, the Dutch-speaking part of Belgium is now part of it, too. Um... Uh, they also have uh, a part of the region called the Low Countries, which grew in Wallonia, which was once in the French-speaking part of Belgium. And it's got underwa underwater uh, acrolyses. Amsterdam, Hague, Europort, which is the location of the former Rotterdam, and Antwerp are all cities in there. 
Um, in 2016 is when the country of Belgium ceased to exist. Uh, Referendum Wallonia declares independence from Flanders. Um, yeah, a lot of stuff happens. Uh, Wallonia joined France as an honors region. And then in 2043, France and Netherlands merged to form the United ne uh, Netherlands um, with changes to the old social, legal, and economic systems. Basically, <sighs> Belgium breaks apart. A lot of stuff happens there. Parts of Belgium go to France. Parts of Belgium go into the Netherlands. And this new version of Netherlands is formed. Um, yeah. Oh, a team from the United Netherlands took part in the FIFA Soccer World Cup in Amazonia in 2064. God damn it, FIFA, you're still around. Uh, and they have at least two professional hoverball teams playing in the uh, WHL, the Nordsea uh, Kablutors and Den Haag. I cannot pronounce that word. I'm not going to even try. I'm not going to butcher that word even more than I need to. Ah. Uh. Anyway, um, Vatican City is technically still a thing, too. Uh, with the Pope issuing Imago Dei, the Doctrine of Magic and Metahumanity in 20, uh, 2024, and in 2061, the Vatican urges the DOCs to hold extra services in light of the surrounding Halley's Comet. Uh, yeah. I don't have a lot on the, the Vatican City, but it's a still thing, too. And guess what that is? That's Europe. In a nutshell. And again, I, I think one of those things I've talked about the entire time I've been chatting about this is I've been using a combination of me... I didn't dive deep into the Shadows of Europe. Now, now why? I talked about it. The Shadows of Europe book is an incredibly great source book, and one of the things I want to do with it is talk about these places in future videos. Like, I've talked about like certain countries and stuff um, and gone along and had these things. The World Tour is a way for me to give a general consensus on a lot of these little countries, give you some basics, and inform you a lot, a lot of different countries that we know some things about. And that's the thing. Just look at the entire Balkans region in Europe. It's a mess. Can I tell you a lot about it? Not really. I really can't. I can tell you about a little bits about things like Estonia, Latvia, Litvia, Konigsberg, Belarus, Ukraine, uh, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, Serbia, kind of, but they're also, like, not as much countries anymore, and there's contested zones, and what's going on with Free Corsica, Greece... The Italian Confederation, Spain, France, United Kingdom. There's so many new city-states, so many new places that have come about as a result of major wars and battles and plagues and huge economic crashes which just destroyed so many governments and stuff like that. And we find places that have managed to rebuild. Think about the difference between the Italian Confederation, the Allied German States, and the Czech Republic, France, Spain. France, Spain, the Czech Republic are all countries I can point out and say they survived very well. The Allied German States, the Italian Confederation, they didn't. They rebuilt themselves, but they didn't. And that's the thing, that's the difference between them. We see countries that have survived more, countries that have rebuilt themselves, and countries that are trying to survive. And this is throughout the world as we've been visiting places. This is a lot of what it is. A lot of terrible shit has happened. There's a lot of hatred, a lot of death, a lot of confused people, a lot of insanity. And people are just trying to live. And sometimes it's in great places and sometimes it's in terrible places. As we continue the world tour, we're probably going to see more of that. And again, I'm going to revisit a bunch of these countries. I can say I will probably do a video each for countries and using the Shadows of Europe book. I have that PDF. Um, I'm just curious. Like, I didn't think there was uh, more of the Shadows series. I'm wondering how many books were in the Shadows series. Um, Shadow... Uh, we had Asia, North America, Europe, and 
Hong Kong. We only got three continents through that. We didn't get South America. We didn't get Africa. We didn't get anything Australia. The, the Shadows books only had those three. And, and granted, they, they, they give us a lot. But it's unfortunate we didn't get more of them, I'm going to say. And I would, again, I would have loved the Shadows book to give me more. Sure, we maybe have like a dozen countries in Europe that we can talk about. But there are so many more that we don't know what's going on. Even small bits that would have been great to know about. How much of the old world exists still? I mean, Europe's a chaotic mess. It does its best to survive. The rest of it just is there. The Balkan states is just squabbling micronations. The best described as this, you know? It's a mess of it. Anyway. So, we will continue our tour of places in uh, the sixth world. We still got a couple more major continents to visit, and then we'll come back and visit some countries in the future. Um, it's a tour to introduce you to the sixth world. A lot of places, peoples, things, and places. I, the point of this entire city is to open your eyes to what is in the sixth world and think about it more than just the technology and sides of culture which aren't are based on things and concepts. I think it's a great place. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed today. If you uh, were watching on Twitch, hi YouTube, you know, uh, you're watching this too. Remember to leave a follow. That's always a great way to support. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can always check me out live on Twitch Tuesdays and Thursdays in the early afternoons, usually around 1 p.m., and Saturdays in the mornings around 11, where I do these live and talk about them. Uh, you can see people chatting live with me. And if they view questions and stuff and comments about it, join me then. Anyway, uh, subscribing on YouTube, leaving a like, ringing that bell to get the rest of these videos, uh, leaving a comment. Interaction's great. And tell me, have you had any adventures in Shadowrun in Europe? What countries have you used or had adventures in? I'm curious. Um, because we do have information on plenty of countries, but there's some that maybe you've used because you know a little bit about that country and want to learn more. Um, anyway, uh, want we'll to see what's going on with me? Discord and the website formerly known as Twitter. I give uh, schedule information and random thought information a lot. And uh, yeah, I think that's all the shout outs I normally need to do. Um, I hope you learned a bunch from this and enjoyed it. These, uh, these are definitely a, a harder video to make for you people um, because it's a lot of information and figuring out what's the right things to say. To not go into too much depths, to go into enough depths, and also there's so many places that are very interesting that we just don't know anything about other than it exists. And to all of you out there, I bid all of you, until the next time we speak about Shadowrun or something else, a fond farewell.